Welcome to another episode of It Takes a Viking. It's Veterans Appreciation Week. We are sharing the stories of tremendous alumni veterans from Salem State University. Very pleased to welcome to the show today a graduate from the class of 2004, David Jones. David, how are you? Welcome to the show. I'm great, Mike. How are you doing? Good. Really, really good. Um, really appreciate you taking the time to join us. I know you're based out on the West Coast, so um, I, I got you a little bit earlier in your day here, so certainly appreciate <laughs> you setting some time aside for us. Of course. Um, the first question we always like to ask folks that come on the show is, um, what brought you to Salem State? How did you end up here? Uh, it's kind of, but it's a very roundabout way, honestly. A um, uh, little background. <clears throat> uh, had a you know, like a lot of people, I had a pretty rough childhood as a kid, left home at 13, uh, went to military school, um, and then I joined the Army. And then uh, my whole idea at the time was just, hey, I'm going to be a tradesperson. I'm going to be in, I'm going to be an electrician. That was my ambition. Well, then I blew out my knee uh, in my ETS window, which is your end of time of service, and just shredded my right knee at 19 years old. So I was like, well, I can't do that. Um I had no idea what I was going to do. And then a friend called me and it's like, just come, just come home and we'll figure it out. You always find a way. Um, so I was able to make some phone calls. I actually secured a boat job out at the Willows uh, to get me home for the summer. Um, <clears throat> and then um, in the fall semester is when I started school. So that was the summer of 99. Um, but <clears throat> I was completely clueless, like a career. Uh, I played I applied to the college at the suggestion of a mentor. He's just saying, you're not doing anything else, go. Um, and I, so I needed somebody to just give me that confidence to tell me that I, you know, that I could go. And I had GI money, so it wasn't any dollars out of my pocket. Um, but that's when I met Kareen Holt, who was the old veterans uh, representative. She's since passed on, but um, she's the one who got me in. I wanted to be a teacher originally. And um, Salem State's a very strong teaching school, obviously. And uh, she was like, uh, my test scores were old because I was in the military. And I just was like, I don't know what I'm going to do now. And she's like, honey, just change your major. And, uh, you know, I said, I like history. And she's like, congratulations. Welcome to Salem State. <laughs> and <laughs> that and that was just careening throughout my whole career and, uh, while she was there the whole time I was in school um, until she retired. And then uh, other people took over. But that's kind of really how I got to Salem State was just a lot of people having more faith and confidence in me than I had in myself. And then just, you know, people opening doors, uh, just, you know, for no reason, just taking a chance on a kid. So that's, that's how I got there. So you come to Salem and you, you finish your time in 04. Um, obviously a little bit of time has passed since then. Now, um, mm -hmm. what have you been up to for the last little while? Talk a little bit about what you're doing today. Uh, so what I'm doing today is uh, I'm a programmer project manager for a company called Convergent Technologies. <coughs> and uh, we're a global systems integrator. Uh, basically, um, if you think of secure network security, stuff like that, um, it's just building automation in those elements. So that's what I'm doing now. Um, that's after 10 years of being a planner. <coughs> and um, that's what all my education was geared towards, was being a city planner, focused on urban geography and GIS, when I was at Salem State, and then urban and regional planning, historic preservation, and GIS when I went to grad school at University of Colorado. I was totally setting my life up to be like this planning savant in the North Shore. Like, that's all I wanted to do, <laughs> historic preservation and planning. And somehow I kept getting pulled other places. My first job was um, developing Costco gas station parking lots, you know, that's so far afield from what I wanted to do, you know, so... Um, with the, but so I kept getting pulled back and forth. Um, and then within the planning world, I got to work on two really cool projects. Um, my last two projects. Well, one was really cool and one kind of broke me. So one was I-502, which was the legalization of uh, marijuana in, in Washington state. And I was able to really dig into that new legislation, which was exciting for me because I got to work with the Association of Washington Cities and things of that nature at the same time there was a plant, a, a development that was happening in the town I was working for. And um, from an ethical standpoint, from a planner, it, it really didn't sit well with me. And I had a number of these kind of projects that were more financially driven than um, community driven. And then I'm sitting there with my buddy uh, at a campfire 
found him and he said, come work for me. So that's how I got to where I am. <laughs> and now I, I, I love one of the things you talked about, right. Is that, you know, you had first started um, kind of in this other sphere, this urban geography planning sphere, and now you're into, um, you know, info project and program management. management, project management. <laughs> yeah. So obviously there's a, there's a little bit of a transition there and I'm sure plenty of transferable skills from yeah. one to the other, but I wonder now with, with a little bit of time and hindsight, um, is there anything that you know now that you wish you had known then? Not really. I wouldn't change it, Mike. I, I really wouldn't. Like, I love what I studied. Um, I still I still do it on the side. I have a small consulting thing where I still do planning on the side, but now I get to choose what I want to do, how I want to apply that. You know, it's more focused towards community and environmental things. Um, but it's still what I love. And it gave me everything I needed to be a, an effective program or project manager. You know, organization, being able to spatially put things together be able to just look at things and see trends and patterns and be able to stay in front of things. Um, so we don't have as many log jams. We don't have as many slips and we, you know, we mind the gap. So um, just the, uh, the way to look at information and having more of a spatially um, recognized approach to just how things are, um, I think really helped me out and has made me, I would like to say pretty successful at what I do. And if someone was interested in pursuing either, you know, from your experience in the previous space or what you're doing now, um, what would be some advice that you would give them on where to get started? Uh, advice to get started. Is one, hindsight's the million dollar question. <laughs> yeah. Um, honestly, because I wanted to be thoughtful in this thought. So, so I want to prepare people for the success you expect. If you don't, you'll get what you get. You will only be as successful as <clears throat> those that work with you will allow. So connect with them on a personal level, make, build things with them, engage uh, your team um, with what's happening, give them pride of ownership. People are much more committed if they feel that they are a part of the creation and the maintenance of it. It's easier to maintain if you create and then promote and cheerlead them. I think that that's something that's really missing is we don't support our peers. We focus on the things that don't get done because those are the things that people don't like. You know, Einstein said it best in a class. He was, he put 10 questions on a board. Nine were right. One was wrong. Everyone focused on the one that was wrong, not the nine things that he did right. So I'm really trying to take that and push that forward, right? Be a leader, not a manager. Leaders don't have to have titles. People naturally gravitate to leaders, people who are doing the right things for the right reasons. That's really it. It's about people. Your individual will only get you so far. You need to, to be able to work with people and to be able to promote people and hold people accountable and be accountable to them. That would be my, my best advice for the career. I think that's great, solid advice and something you can use in any industry that you're probably in, yeah. being that good, effective team player for sure. Absolutely. Um, one, one of the questions that I, I think is interesting is, I so candidly, I don't know anything about the work that you do. Um, <laughs> You know, but I, I have a grasp on, on project management, but not in the sphere that you're in. Um, so when you think about a project that, that's maybe been a challenge for you, that maybe you didn't hit the goal that, you know, that was set for you as part of the project, is there one that kind of resonates with you after the years of doing it? And maybe what did you learn from that? Um, Honestly, I haven't really had a bunch of big gaps, luckily. Maybe that's why I'm still employed. But um, I've, I've had some hard, I've had some really hard projects that were, were really difficult to get through. And um, the lessons I learned there were that the things that, that, I, that I try to do with my approach, right, is try to make it as simple as possible, standardize, don't make anything for you, make it for the person you want to engage in it so it's easier than to provide what you need. Um, and finding that out, getting to that point is just a lot of just years of like failing and, and learning. I wouldn't really say failing. It's just because you don't know what you don't know. But learn from your mistakes, document it, find your process. Because as soon as you have a baseline of how you approach business as a project manager, as a program manager, I always like to say the widget can change because the process is the process, right? So if you as a project manager have a strong process, but you maintain it, you build it with your team, you you continue to um, 
<clears throat> cultivate it as a team, you know, make it work for people. That's going to be your foundation because project management is really organizing chaos to an end result. So continually failing and being able to do that, meeting small, missing small deadlines and things like that. It's really kind of built up this just overall portfolio of the last 20 years of um, where I am today. And one of the things I like to do now is take that portfolio and share it with the next generation. Not that I'm that old, but, you know, these kids to help them or these young adults, I should say, to help them not have to fight uphill so hard. Right. Somebody took the time to document it. Let's not recreate the wheel. Let's pass it forward. So that's I mean, that's really the biggest lesson for me is just through repetitive minor failure that it really helps you hone in on what matters to get the, the highest and best result out of your team and yourself. And as we say, it, I, I love the way you phrase that. I mean, in the events world, we basically say prepare <laughs> for the worst and hope for the best kind of, you know, so um, it's like trying to juggle cats. Um, so we've talked about the last 20 years since you graduated. I know you mentioned at the top of our interview, the impact that Kareen had on you in terms of coming here and helping get it, get you through your time at Salem. But I wonder, is there any one experience that you, when you think back to your time at Salem, that really stands out to you as kind of a core memory from your time here? Yes, there, there is one. And it's funny because I love my department. I love the geography department. Like that, like I ride or die all, <laughs> all the time. But this memory, it really resonates with me because of multiple reasons. One, it was outside of the department. It was in my least favorite subject in the history of any education. Um, and because my test scores were so old, when I came, when I started college, I had to take algebra one <laughs> or college algebra, I think it was called at the time. Um, algebra just doesn't work for me. So um, <clears throat> the professor, he wasn't tenured, and I believe his name was Mr. Lampus. He was um, uh, he was also teaching over at North Shore Community College. And uh, for that class, we had class on Tuesdays and Thursdays. That man was he willingly taught me and two exchange students, one from Cameroon and one from the Ukraine, and the three of us went to his office hours every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And he retaught the lesson to us so we could understand it. We had, you know, we could say, hey, this doesn't make sense. Simplify it. And he put that in. And that's just crazy. It's my lowest grade I ever got in college, which was a B plus. And it's my most, the grade I'm most proud of because that was a professor. He had nothing. I wasn't in his department. He had nothing other than he saw three kids that were willing to put in the effort to try to improve. And that's just, that sums up my time at Salem State. Like that, you know, wasn't my department. We took one class with the guy and it's just awesome. Awesome. So that's my, that's probably my favorite memory that doesn't have anything to do with my department. And one of the, you know, one of the, the reasons that I got to know about you a little bit, David, was that, um, and, and hearing you explain that story now, it, it, kind of makes sense the next question that I'm going to ask but you know you recently started a scholarship at the university um and so I wonder was that sort of kind of you know as you were thinking about we certainly appreciate it without a doubt and so of course but knowing that there are many different options for people to support philanthropically was that something to you that kind of led to you saying this is a place that I want to support Oh, yeah. Like ever since I graduated, like Salem State is home to me. Um, it really is. Like I always say, like it will always be home for me. It's one of the four pillars of my life. Um, it's one of the most impactful places. It gave me my start to to become who I am today. It's foundational, a lot of things. So I knew my struggle and I knew that Salem State was a, it's a, it's a working school. Like the kid, most of the kids that are going there, like we're working, we're doing one or two jobs. You know, it's 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 hard. They're grinders. So whenever I got in a position, and I always said whenever I got in a position where I could provide something back to someone who had a similar experience of mine, you know, not necessarily my experience, but someone who's just working, paying their own tuition, paying their own rent, you know, just grinding through college to just change their stars on their own effort and energy. I just want to pay it forward. I, you know, I had the opportunity from that school through that department to get to where I am. 
And I would be remiss if I didn't give something back to someone who could potentially follow that same path, you know? And I, you know, I, in the work that we do, it's always so fulfilling to hear that, that the school had such an impact on your life that now that you're in a position to be able to do something in a way that's important to you, you would consider the university as a recipient of that generosity. So we are endlessly grateful to you for, for what you've done um, for the university, for the country, through your service in the armed forces. Um, and, and obviously we know that, you know, you're still a pretty young guy, so the, the future is very bright for you. <laughs> this girl here would tell you otherwise, but, you know, I'm, I'm only 43 young. It's just this is the job. This is PM, right? This is project management, program management. But, you know, the way you answered that question was kind of the last question that I like to ask is what does being a member of the community mean to you? And I think you've really you've put a beautiful bow on it in such a succinct way. And. You know, I know myself and, and thousands of others share a similar experience to you. And, and it's always just nice to hear these stories from folks that, um, you know, we were at the college around the same time, not at the same time, but around yeah. the same time. Um, but always hearing these generational stories about how whether you came here in the 50s, 60s, 70s, whatever, yeah. you're going to be able to find somebody in the room that you can relate to when you come to something on campus. Absolutely. Um, and it's beautiful because I'm still, when I come back, I still get invited to like the Gamma Theta Upsilon, the Ge Geographic Honor Society banquets and stuff like that. I'm still connected with with my professors who are now the chair people. Like they had the geography of the, uh, a geography course that came out to the Northwest. We linked up. I got to take tour their kids around the city from someone who's from planning and from local, and it was amazing. So the connection runs deep. I'm super glad that it's still there. Um, yeah, it's it's literally probably in the top two of my most cherished accomplishments in my life it was because first one to graduate college, first one to go to school, you know, there was a lot of firsts and there was a lot of proven things to myself. And now I just like, you know, it's just, it's really just foundational, man. It, it, I can't explain it any better than that, Mike. Well, I, I don't know if we could end our conversation and time together in any better of a way either. <laughs> so David, I, again, I really appreciate your time. I know it's it's still an early part of your day out there while we're connecting. Um, I started I start my day at five a.m. Pacific, so oh, so you're like close fine. to lunch at this point. Then, so you're good. Yeah, yeah. I'm good um, so. But again, really, really appreciate you taking the time to connect with us. I know you're going to stay in touch and stay connected with the university. Um, can't Absolutely. wait to have you back on campus at some point. Um, and thanks again for joining us. It was really great talking with you. Absolutely, you too. Thank you for the time and. Thank you for working around my schedule as much as you have. So it's really appreciated. No problem. Take care, Mike, and have a great weekend, my man. You too. Thank you. Yes, sir. And that was another great episode of It Takes a Viking, David Jones, class of 2004, part of our celebration of Salem State veteran alumni. Um, stay tuned for more great content coming to you throughout the week. Uh, my name is Mike Mitchell, Associate Director of Alumni Relations here at Salem State. And until next time, thanks for watching.